Okay. Hey. Um, so I wanted to show people how you can actually write your own uh, little optimizer rule, how you can actually do some customization. Uh, I'm going to show in Databricks. I hope the internet connection is okay. Um, so I'm going to try to do some typing, um, or I'm going to open this little workbook. And let me make a cluster first before we get bitten by that. So this is Databricks Community Edition. If you want to play with Spark, I'd highly recommend it. Spark Summit. And we just do Spark 2.0. And now it is the cluster is being created, and we'll see like this little spinner, and it somehow at some point tells us when the cluster is ready. Um, I'm going to just show you a toy example of how you write your own optimizer rule, uh, actually planning rule. And um, to give you some inspiration how to do it yourself. Let's start by this like really trivial example. Yay, our cluster is up. So let's just execute that. What I'm doing is I'm joining two tables, two synthet synthetic tables. Uh, tables A and B, I'm joining them on their keys. I'm grouping uh, and I'm doing a count afterwards. So I want to know how many records are in there. Hmm. Now we have to wait until that's finished, but it's probably starting a few things up. Okay, so now we have this, um, this table. Um, let's see how long this is going to take. So this is running a Spark job. Let's just open the UI for fun. Maybe, ooh, it's... So if you execute this, um, if you have never seen the UI, I'd highly recommend it because we have like nice visual uh, representation of what is going on be below the covers. Um, what you see, what, what, what is happening is that we are producing two times 50 million records in ranges, and you see these, these blocks, whole, K, whole stage code gen, that means that we uh, are actually not doing this in an interpreted mode, but the whole range is completely compiled down to uh, a little Java program. Then we exchange the data, because we need the keys to be on the same partition. We sort it, because it's a sort merge join. Then we join it. And then we um, calculate the hash aggregate. And the hash aggregate has two phases. We, we first do um, a partial aggregate, um, so we don't need to shuffle everything across the network, and then we do the complete aggregate. So you see this one is, this takes hardly any time. And then we collect the result. So this produces a result of 50 million um, records. Does anybody have an idea how we can do better? No? Oh. So I just showed you, showed you the plan, right? Uh, this is uh, another way of getting to the logical plan. So if you do this, where is it? Ah, here it is. So this um, is the textual representation of the same plan. So the inner join uh, you see happening, and then we do hardly any optimization because it's, it's really uh, a small query. And then, then you see the planning. But Doing a sort and exchange is, um, those are among the most expensive operations uh, you can do in Spark. So prevent them at all cost. Just uh, how, but, but how can we prevent them in this case? We cannot really do a broadcast join because the tables are too big. So we need to find another way to prevent actually those sorts and exchange from happening. Um, but then we need to start thinking about the problem at hand and uh, also exploit the structure of the problem. We are joining ranges, and if you join ranges of consecutive values, you are joining intervals. If you are joining intervals, um, you can just take the intersection of the interval, and then you have actually the range, uh, the resulting range. So we can also do this in Spark. Okay, so I've typed it down a bit differently. So 
if we know we have two ranges, we're joining them, and we're joining them on their key. We can just take the start, the maximum of the, the first start, the start items, and the end of the, the ends, uh, the minimum of the ends, and then we get like the, uh, the new interval. So let's just try that in Spark, in SQL. So you need a little bit of boilerplate, so you need to import a lot of things native to Catalyst. But then, uh, and then we are going to write like this thing called a strategy. And the strategy does a few things. So it has like this apply method, and as we said, strategies return, you, you take a strategy and that re the strategy returns, takes a, uh, a logical plan and returns a spark plan, a physical plan. And we do this by pattern matching. So we take the plan and we say match in Scala. And then we do this partial function magic. And we are just going to look for a join in the tree. And a join has to have two ranges uh, attached to it. The ranges need to have uh, yeah, a beginning and end, but that's logical. But um, the, the step size of the range needs, needs to be one or they need to be the same. And uh, the last one is how many partitions you're using, but that's not that interesting at the moment. And it has an output. It also needs to be an inner join, but you, if you are a little bit creative, you can also extend this to an outer join or, uh, or a full outer join. Mm. Okay, and then, um, so we need, it, it needs to be an equi join. That's also kind of important. Um, and we also need to make sure, so you have like this if statement there, and that, that, that's called the guard in Scala. So uh, that's an, like an extra condition you can apply to your pattern match if you cannot express it in the pattern match. And in this case, we need to be sure that the keys used in the equal condition, or condition are produced by the, the bo both ranges. So we're not doing something weird. Uh, so we're not doing a cross join by, uh, by accident, for instance. Um, okay, and then we... So this is the match. This is actually uh, how we find these little, uh, the place where we can apply the optimization. Next is, um, uh, next we need to check that they are actually overlapping. So, um, and we do this by that. So the start one needs to be smaller than end one, also not overlapping. And the ends need, uh, uh, also need to be overlapping. Um, and then we just, Take the maxes like we uh, we said before in the result, and we can actually then we're sure we, we can actually optimize this. Then we take uh, the star, you calculate new start, new end. Um, we need to do some magic with partitioning. Um, normally, you would say something like Spark conf uh, default max per, max partitions, but 200 was a bit shorter, so I opted for that. And then we plan actually just range uh, just a new range because it became a range. And we need to do a little bit of projection to make sure that uh, the names are right. So that's what happens in two columns. And then we just return the two column plan. In the else, um, if we don't know how to plan things in Spark, um, if the rules that does not apply, you just re return a nil, and then you're done. So, and now comes, so this is our rule. And let's see if this works. Ooh, did I delete it? Oh no. Okay, and now we need to find a way to inject it into Spark. At the moment we have this thing called Spark.experimental and you can add a few, uh, you can add extra strategies and you can add extra optimized rules. Um, I think in 2.2 we're going to um, widen that so people can actually just provide their own uh, rules if they need to. And so you can actually have like customize uh, your own experience much more. Um, well, we just inject it. I think I've deleted this one. Have I? Hmm. Okay. Now, uh, last one took how much time? 18.3 seconds. This is always very... This took uh, 0.41 seconds because we removed the shuffle and we removed the sort and we moved, removed like a, a lot of very expensive operators. Um, let's, look, let's take a final look at the plan. 
So if you would explain this, it would look like this. You, you, you don't see the, um, the source merge join, join anymore, just the range, and that's it. Uh, I've made this example to illustrate that it's actually quite simple to make these rules. It is not a, um, um, you need a little bit of, you need to do a little bit of coding, but please, if you have these problems, know that it is there. Um, in open source, um, in Apache Spark, oh, I need my presentation now. In open source Spark, we have about 200 people who have worked th this. Oh, well, okay, this is not not the best uh, slide. Um, people create uh, open source PRs, uh, pull requests for Apache Spark. And you typically can write like really efficient uh, optimized rules uh, with really relatively, relatively little effort. So, for instance, this guy he wrote uh, a patch of 110 lines, and he went down f uh, f um, his query went from never, never uh, finishing to 200 seconds. So, uh, I think that has uh, something to say about the power of uh, Catalyst that you can do the, do these things, and a lot of people work on these uh, on these rules. So if you want to start working on this, the source code you can find over here. It's in uh, go to GitHub and open um, the Apache Spark repository. Read some transformations, look how they are done. Check out pull requests and start writing code in Catalyst and open a PR. OK, if you want to try Databricks, please do. Uh, the community edition is a very good place to start experimenting with these things and have an actual cluster without installing it. And um, I'll take questions now. That's yeah, that's it. All right, that was quick and short. That was nice. Um, thanks a lot. We got two mics at the end of the aisle. Please feel free to ask questions. We have loads of time left. Um, fire away. There we go, a question on the left. Hi, uh, sorry, it's a little uh, silly question, but can you show the how to start uh, slide again? Uh, and also, um, you, you mentioned the uh, sort is something that you should never, uh, that you should always uh, try to avoid. Can you mention a few more things that you should always try to avoid? So, uh, have like rule of thumb of uh, uh, when to write transformation? <laughs> Um, okay, uh, which slide were you referring to? Let's do that one first. Uh, where to get started first. Oh, okay. Uh, and what are some of the things we can actually avoid? Okay, I can do that. Um, this one. Okay. Go back. This one. Okay, things you need to avoid while, <laughs> while writing rules. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> if you want to. Okay, you need to be uh, careful for, for a few things. Um, rules sh should be item potent. They're not, they are not always, but they should be. That means that if you apply the rule, it doesn't matter how, how often you apply the rules, um, uh, the result will be the same. That, that, that's one. Uh, I'm actually, I'm actually ask, asking about uh, steps that you should avoid, and then I, I will know that I, will have to, that I should write my own strategy. So you show that in a plan, uh, you shouldn't, if you see like... So oh, those things. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, so things you need to avoid. Um, exchanges are, are things you want to avoid. Mm -hmm. uh, th those kill performance. Um, yeah, and they, they yeah, Cartesian joins are also things you want to avoid. Uh, what else can I say? Uh, just l look at, um, if you, just, you I showed you the Spark UI, right? Yes. Look at that and see what, where your bottlenecks are, and tr start with those. And if you have something, if your pro program has like a structure, your problem has a structure that allows you to optimize it, then by all means go ahead. That's that's my gen general. Uh, okay. Cool. So just uh, see what stage takes me the longest, and then try to optimize yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just take a look at. Uh, yeah, I, w I would do that. Just use profiling information, Thank because you. an exchange uh, can be like super small, right? Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't need to take as long, but just look uh, how, how the data is structured and your program is structured. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? 
Got a question on the right? Um, in your examples, we saw a binary joins. Um, what is the roadmap for multi-way join optimization? Multiple join optimization. Um, uh, we do um, so. We don't have like one node for multiple joins. So we also always do binary joins. Um, however, uh, what we do is uh, we reorder joins so that they are ordered in such a way that we don't don't do like a Cartesian product at the beginning, if if there are any, and try to do the smallest tables first and make that bigger. Um, Related to this is uh, we are working on CBO in Spark 2.2 with uh, Huawei, um, and they are, um, and then we are going to use statistics to make that even better. Thanks. I wonder if you have any tips um, to to better like uh, synchronize or, or um, view from the um, the SQL query from the Web UI. What piece of code was uh, used to to build these blocks? So let me just explain what, what I'm doing. So usually I, I create this, these uh, very long um, uh, calculations, and trans transformations, and so on. And uh, it's only when uh, I, I see an issue, like a performance issue, or, or something goes wrong, that I watch the, the SQL. And it's usually an, a huge uh, graph. Yeah. So it becomes very difficult to to see. Okay, here I see some some uh, line, uh, some some records. Maybe it's too much. Yeah. Where do, do I find the piece of code that was responsible for that block? <laughs> Ooh. Uh, <laughs> that depends on how large your query is, because sometimes that gets really hard. Um, yeah, you generally just start using the UI. It should be kind of straightforward, but we don't have like. Uh, a connection to the actual tree, how long it took, but that would be a nice feature to add. Yeah, maybe just like some, a comment that you could add for each uh, map or flat map or whatever, that you, you can at least find find back that, that Trace piece it back, of code yeah. in the in yeah, the SQL statement. There is not anything like that at the moment, but uh, I think that's worth adding. Uh, okay. So right now it's just uh, we're on our own. No, well, you're not on your own. So you have the Spark UI, but uh, if you have truly large uh, query plans and at some point, will really get hard to debug those. But uh, I think that's also uh, that that actually also boils down to the fact that you just yeah modular modularize your code and make sure and just test queries uh, independently. Mm -hmm. They won't change so much uh, that that you cannot do that and that you cannot get like a valid result from that. Um, well, that's uh, that, yeah, that's what I would typically do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned um, the, the fixed point approach in the batches of transformation on, on, uh, on trees. How can you be sure that you don't introduce cycles in there? Um, is it checked? Yeah, it is checked. So you, you can technically define one rule that does the one thing and another rule that does completely the opposite thing in the same batch. If that happens, um, the optimization won't converge, and then you uh, it'll throw an exception. So it's at, at runtime, okay. Hmm? At runtime, you yeah 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 it will throw throw an exception during analysis. Yeah. Okay, and the second question is about the um, the several physical planes that you generate. Uh, you mentioned cost-based optimization, but we didn't really see a concrete example of that, did we? No. So currently, it's very simple. We pick the first plan, but we are adding cost-based optimization in 2.2. And how would you define such a cost? Uh, uh. Uh, well, um, there are formulas for that, and uh, we will we'll start with a simple one uh, uh, that has to do with how many row records there are, the record size, uh, if you are starting to shuffle, uh, and a few other uh, factors. Okay. Thanks. Hi. Uh, my question is whether it is possible to fall into local minimum by following the sequence of transformations of the tree. And how to avoid it if it is possible? Um, yeah, so we are using currently we're using heuristics, so they are inherently they're 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 local, they're they're aimed towards local optimization. I, to be honest, I have not seen a case in which that was a problem, uh, but you have a point that you also should more. You could also look very holistically at the plan, and see uh, and try very different strategies. But we are going to try that in, uh, with cost-based optimization. 
Okay, thank you. And second question is, can you please name an optimization which makes sense for some particular application but should not for sure be included in the core distribution of Spark? Thank you. Could you name an optimization? Could you, could you repeat that question? Yeah, my, my question is whether it is uh, possible to create an optimization which should not be included in the core of Spark, so it, it's not general enough, but certain applications may benefit from it. Mm. Most good ones are in there. Um, that's hard. Yeah, but then I why think you can uh, you can actually do do a few things with those range joints uh, and more more general things, but uh, in the end you will need an actual range joint operator if you are going down that path. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, back to the first presentation, uh, you showed uh, a benchmark between RDDs and datasets. Uh, could you explain what those catalysts do in order to get that performance benefit? Well, at least the most important, <laughs> what makes the difference? Um, yeah, it is um, better at shuffling the data. So, um, and also, in this case, I think it's mainly seri uh, serialization because we can actually be much more uh, in this case, uh, we would uh, use like binary records, w of which we know the structure, so we can actually be just write those, and instead of using uh, um, cryo or Scala uh, or Java serialization. Ah. So, so that's a big factor, and also the fact that uh, these are virtual functions, and if we compile it down using whole stage code generation, uh, we actually get a much um, uh, a much faster plan, a much faster uh, program. Thank you. Last question at the end over there. Is there some ranking in terms of computational complexity um, of the different operations? Is that a generic, uh, ge uh, general question? Um, uh, I'm, 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 not, I'm not completely following. Uh, do you mean like optimi optimized rules, how complex they are, or do you mean operators? Uh, you just talked about your heuristics, and are there somewhere formalized that someone can look them up? Um, yeah, they are the, uh, they're currently in the source code. Okay. So look at the optimizer. It's, it, I promise you, uh, the, the result I just sh show you guys, I've shown you guys, is, is normal. That's, that's normal optimizer rule. There, some are more complex, yes, but not much complex, more complex. It is easy to get through. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Give a big hand to Herman for his two sessions. Thank you.